Okay, we're, we just started recording. So welcome in everybody. And I just wanted to show you, uh, I put that in the chat there, uh, for those of you just getting in now, the link to the Hannibal event next week. And then also um, I wanted to just show you, let's see, I'll share my screen with you. I am working, I've been promising, I am working on creating a, a place for you guys to um, order your color changing mug videos. And so I think I figured out a way to do it now where um, you guys will just place your order and uh, it will send you to a thank you page and you'll have, you'll have directions there to e uh, an email address to email your, your design to. And then um, I'll also get a, an email that you've ordered something and so I'll make sure that I reach out to you and we can uh, talk exactly about details. So I think we're gonna offer maybe three types of call to actions on the same design. And we just have to go over it today to make sure that it's all working. But we are, I am creating that now. We wanna make sure that we have the, the right price for you guys and um, also just the, the right logistics. So that is happening um, as we speak. And then also, let me move this over here. I am, I have some Bible covers are done and um, we are going to be giving one away uh, and I'll give you more one design away for your Bible covers just for waiting patiently Lisa's working on them so we have she's got a few done so she only has a few more to go and then we'll have that pack available for you so we're just gonna probably do uh, first just one pack and then we'll probably offer some more designs and then you can have your choice but they will only be in packs of 10 um, let me turn down my phone so also, so you can see that she, we're working on those too. And this is Trello. This is where I work with all, a lot of my designer, uh, the designers. And this is just like a, if you ever want to check this out, it's pretty cool. Really good for design, but it's easy to keep track of designs and, and files and all that stuff. So I just wanted to show you those couple things, okay? Um, so as we get started, uh, I have a guest with us today. Steve, um, Steven is with us. And uh, I, for those of you that... Um, Stephen West. For those of you that were in Hannibal last time, he was there. He's he's an awesome dude. He's uh, got a lot of knowledge, and he just wanted to jump on the webinar today and just to get some questions and answers uh, session with you guys. He's going to talk a little bit about his business um, and what he's doing, and, and just some uh, some things that have helped him, you know, over the last few years, and just uh, exact tell you a story, and then uh, kind of show you guys some things. And then if you have questions after, we're going to take some questions, and uh, he's going to just be dropping knowledge on you. So, Stephen, can you hear me? All right. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, so welcome, Stephen. Um, I'll let you kind of take it from there. When you're ready, you can just let me know, and I'll just, you know, I'll hand you the screen. But uh, um, so I'll let you just kind of talk about it from there. Thanks, Stephen. Okay, thank you. Well, look at here. I am just tickled to be on this call. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored, and I'm privileged to be here on something called Ask the Experts webinar. It's hard for me to believe that I am an expert, but after all the blood, sweat, and tears, I guess I poured into figuring out this this mistress we call e-commerce, then I guess uh, I've got something to add to the group. So I really do appreciate it. You can throw me that screen anytime you get ready. And for anybody that was uh, in Hannibal, yeah, I was there. And anybody that wasn't in Hannibal and is on the fence about whether to go, I'm going to be there. Uh, so hopefully after this presentation, uh, just drop some nuggets on you, have some Q&A, and if you want to spend some more time with me, I'll be available at the Hannibal event coming up. Love to work with you and and, and share with you. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Stephen. So um, we are going to, we're going to probably, Stephen's going to present here for a little bit, and then like I said, after we'll take some, some, some questions and stuff. So um, if you're ready, Stephen, I'll hand you over the... Uh, yep. The the screen and let me uh, yeah, just I'm ready okay all right can everybody see my screen I can see it yes all right well there we go so if you see something a globe in the palm of your hands saying we live in a special time then we're good to go can you see that yes sir can you guys everyone see it yep they see it Good. So, every generation lived in a special time. What's special about this is this is our time. We can't have the past. We can't have the future. We've got the present. And it is a wonderful time for reasons I'll hopefully explain. So, 
just some data I grabbed for you. Obviously, the, the chart on the left, and I refuse to read slides to you. I hope this is graphical enough, but uh, you're in the right place. If you're interested in e-commerce, whether you're all in or you're kicking tires or just trying to figure this thing out, uh, if this was your stock portfolio or you, your 401k, you probably wouldn't be on this call. But you're probably like me, and it's got the opposite trend. So if you just look at the chart on the left, it's U.S. retail e-commerce sales and what, what it's done over the last few years up through 20. 14, but more importantly, globally, if you look at the headline up there, worldwide retail e-commerce sales uh, reached right at two trillion with a T dollars in uh, 2016, and it's expected to double. When you got a two trillion dollar industry is going to double in a few years, then you're in the right place at the right time. So don't be alarmed by the red line going down because it's, it's still double digit growth. It's just not gonna grow at quite the rate it was. But more importantly, the blue line that's going up, that is the percent of total retail sales. So the traditional brick and mortar is giving up sales, as I'm sure you've seen in the headlines, to e-commerce. And this is not just the brick and mortar to big boys and girls just transition into e-commerce. This is an opportunity for the mom and pops, such as me and everyone on this call, to be able to get in the ground floor or something and do something exciting. And I'm not sure where you could put your time, money, and energy and be better positioned to be on the ground floor or something that has such a tremendous uh, potential for growth. So this stuff hitting on trial. So that's, that's e-commerce as a whole, both in the U.S., and the world. But check this out. I think last year, 43% of all e-commerce sales in the United States were on Amazon. And so you say, that's not 50% yet, but I would, I would argue they're headed there. And what is more important about being on Amazon, whether you sell anything there or not, is over 50% of every search for a product originates on Amazon, even if they don't buy there. Now, more than 50%, I think it was 55%, and that was according to Amazon, some insider information I got when I had the privilege of uh, meeting with Amazon at, at the headquarters in Seattle. That means more people begin a search online on Amazon than Google, Bing, or all the retail, Walmart, Sears, you name it, combined. Now, they may just do their research and then go find somewhere else to buy it, but most of the searching to the tune of 55%. So if you look at that growth in just prime, what's interesting about that is, again, you see the headline, I ain't telling you what to do. I'm not telling you to consider selling on Amazon, but there is something to be said for a trend like that, and I think it's only going up, is that prime members have been proven to be extremely loyal to Amazon. If they're non-prime, they may shop around. Prime members have been proven to just one click, stick it in the cart, buy it, and expect it very quickly. And so Prime members expect very quick delivery, and to be eligible for that, your products have to be an FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, which means you would have your products stocked in well over 100 distribution centers in the United States, as well as the opportunity to go global with Amazon's presence in, the, in Europe and Asia and rapidly expanding all over the globe. So again, I ain't telling you what to do, but there's something to be said for considering Amazon and your e-com play. And I, I understate that when I say consider. Um, now, we'll talk later. I'll open up the Q&A. There's upside and there's downside. And the upside is this is just traffic. Eyeballs are going to get on your product if you know what you're doing, if you stick it on Amazon. Sometimes you cannot know what you're doing and get lucky, but that's sometimes like winning the lottery. The downside is um, it's Amazon's business. It's Jeff Bezos' business. It's not yours. But you can launch a brand on Amazon like we're doing and take customers off Amazon. So the issue with Amazon is you don't get the credit card. You don't get the customer's email address. They're Amazon's customers, they're not yours. But there's strategies to be able to launch a brand on Amazon and then get your customers to know you, love you, trust you, and look for you uh, outside of Amazon within terms of service without getting in any trouble. What's interesting is what makes this so uh, uh democratic of an opportunity for just just basic people like me 
is if you've heard Greg Ryder talk about Demi Lovato and her launch and her skincare brand, she has over 100 million social media followers. I have less than 100,000, and I worked really hard to get them because obviously I'm not as talented and good-looking and as good of a singer as she is. So she's good at what she does. But even with all of that social media following and selling a couple million dollars worth of skincare, I too have sold a couple million dollars worth of stuff. However, I sell more in a month on Amazon than she did all of last year. Does that make me smarter than her? No, I just invested my time in learning how to sell on Amazon and we can partner with and help celebrities through celebrity lifestyle brands or through our own network here with uh, T-Rex and Printex. So, it, you know, again, the downside is you don't own a customer and you don't own this, this platform. Uh, the upside is there's a lot of eyes. The other downside is to have that inventory sitting in FBA requires you to lay out some capital. It's capital intensive. And what you don't know can hurt you on Amazon. So I've spent a lot of money on inventory. I've spent a lot of money on my education to, uh, to learn how to do this. I have spent lots and lots of dollars uh, to figure this out. The flip side is if you just don't even consider Amazon, that's fine. You're in the right place. What is interesting about what I just said about the downsides to Amazon is you don't have those in your partnership with T-Rex and Printex. You're not, with Printex, you're not laying out capital. You're not trying to buy 10,000 T-shirts of one design hoping they sell and then have some rental storage unit or some garage somewhere or having uh, Amazon charging you for excessive inventory that's not moving. This is, this is you driving traffic to your offers and you own the platform with T-Rex. And look, it's, I worked hard to be able to get access to some people at Amazon. But, but trust me, they're busy, and they're not going to give me their undivided attention. The team at Celebrity Lifestyle Brands and T-Rex and Printex, I mean, you, you know, you got, I can't access Jeff Bezos. It was all I could do to get access to folks that report to him. But you can get in touch with Greg Ryder and Randy Parks and, and Michael and this team, and they're going to be there for you. So there's a lot of upsides to Amazon. There's a lot of downsides, and the downsides are, are really covered when you consider the partnership and opportunity you have with T-Rex and Printex and the Celebrity Lifestyle brand. So let me tell you the importance of not just selling stuff. Uh, selling stuff is awesome, but building a brand is more awesome. GoPro sold their business for $3 billion. They didn't just sell cameras. They created a brand. They didn't invent the camera. Their camera already existed. They just figured out a cool way to stick it to some adrenaline junkie's helmet so he could video himself jumping off a cliff on a bicycle and doing backflips. I mean, so they understood their market and they built a brand around that market. So n never have we lived in a time where you could take something that already existed like a camera. So if you hear somebody say, you can't make money on Amazon anymore, you can't make money in e-commerce anymore, been there, done that, Jeff Bezos's uh, the, the founder and CEO of Amazon's goal for Amazon is if civilization ended today, he wants one of everything in Amazon to rebuild society, rebuild civilization. And you may laugh at that, but he's serious. I mean, he's, he's serious to the tune of you see how successful Amazon is. So there can't be too many SKUs. There can't be too many offerings online. And so, again, I show you this to encourage you that to build a better brand and to build a better use for an existing product, it, that, that's just waiting to happen. The other thing is, you, you've, you've heard it said before, largest transportation company on earth doesn't own any automobiles. So to come up with an idea like this, uh, to, li to, to live in this digital world and this digital marketing space, people thought you can see at the bottom it says nuts, insane, idiocy. Yeah, laughing all the way to the bank, Uber, uh, Back, this was an article from 2014 that Uber might well be worth $18 billion. I don't know what it's worth now. So um, look, a couple kids get together, design an app. It's just an app. It's just an app that Facebook paid $19 billion for. So they were already apps. And you could say there's already enough apps. They don't, we don't need any more apps. And, and what's interesting about Uber is there's Lyft and there's Fair and there's people jumping into the market all the time and building big, real businesses with just an idea and, and some digital assets and a computer and internet connection. So again, you've heard uh, it said that the largest retailer on earth doesn't own any retail stores. Alibaba, 
this IPO was worth like $130 billion largest IPO in history. So, uh, again, China is really good at manufacturing. They're not really good at marketing. So Alibaba came along along with AliExpress to be able to connect the manufacturers with U.S. markets that will know how to put up these e-commerce sites and drive traffic and get sales. And that's the opportunity what we're looking at is is to get in on the ground floor or something when it, it just really is maturing. And if you've heard it said, it takes 20 years to make overnight success. Amazon's been at this 20 some years. I think the first prime event was two years ago, and that was celebrating their 20th anniversary. 20 years of bleeding cash and 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 laying it out there. Um, just to get where they are now. We don't have to go through that. We've got opportunities to leverage the skill, talents, abilities, networks, systems that are in place to be able to, uh, to bootstrap an e-commerce site. When you partner with somebody like T-Rex who is building the, the platform for you and setting up everything and having all these, these really awesome tools and doing designs for you and partnering with you and then PrintX that's going to take care of the inventory is going to drop ship this stuff for you. So if you're trying to get stuff from China, either you're laying out capital and dealing with freight forwarders and trying to get stuff here and you're months away from getting your money versus you sell something on your site and in three to five days the customer has it, it's made in the USA tremendously powerful. So again, I'm not trying to talk you into Amazon, but I'm showing you that very successful Amazon marketers created a checklist. So just very quickly to let you know you're in the right place, if uh, even if you're just selling uh, apparel and print-on-demand stuff on uh, T-Rex, you PrintX and celebrity lifestyle brands, average order value 30 to 70 bucks starting out. Hey, a couple T-shirts, maybe a hoodie, a mug, and you're in there. Um, is there search volume? You bet. For tees and 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 political messages and stuff that revolves around a niche. Uh, BSR is just an Amazon-specific term for bestseller ranking. Uh, just the bottom line is, is, is there demand for this product? Is there, is there a lot of key keywords? Uh, how about number six, lends itself to return customers. You get product out to these customers, they're going to come back and, and they buy a T-shirt, they might buy a bib, they might buy onesies, they may buy the hoodies. You're going to get return customers, especially if you're cranking out good designs. They're going to come back and see what else you got. Uh, related products, oh my gosh, if you looked at all that PrintX offers and they're constantly coming out with new stuff like the signs and the etched glass and the Bible covers. I mean, once you get somebody in the door with a t-shirt and to be able to offer them mugs and beer signs and, and you name it. And then of course the next one, bundling. How awesome is it is to get a winning design and bundle that with several products, whether it's for different members of the family, you got a lady's t-shirt and you get a child's and you get the dads, grandmas, you name it. Uh, <clears throat> number nine, non-commodity. I mean, if you've got a unique design and you're speaking to a niche and you're speaking to their passion market, I mean, it, it's it, it, a blank t-shirt, it's a commodity, but a really cool t-shirt that allows somebody to advertise to the world who they are and what they're about is, is a huge deal. You can certainly add value at number 10. That's what you bring uh, to this understanding your market. Look, <clears throat> Women and baby boomers are still spending most of the money on the internet. So if you've got designs that target those, that's why the uh, the grandma store is a wonderful thing. Product weight under the weight and shipping is a big deal. Uh, you know, if you start shipping big stuff, uh, Randy's got to cover that cost and you got to cover that cost. So anytime you've got something like a mug or a t-shirt or a hoodie, and it's and and you can see number four, small in size. Non-restricted is just the Amazon thing, where if it's a restricted category, you got to jump through a lot of hoops to get into that category on Amazon. Clothing can be one of them. So if you're trying to sell clothing on Amazon, um, it can be a pain. So you may be better off just uh, doing that to uh, T-Rex and then and, and PrintX. And then if you go big, then you can just start to mirror your products over there. Just, we just live in an exciting time where you can have your Amazon stuff mirrored on Shopify and have your Shopify store uh, back in fulfilled through your FBA inventory. And then we're working on that to have all of that type of stuff so you can just deal directly with Randy and PrintX to be able to do your fulfillment of the stuff you would ordinarily have at Amazon. Seller Central Ads just means somebody spending money to advertise this product. And 17 is the same thing. If you go on Google and you do a keyword search and immediately at the top you see Google Shopping, then, then somebody's trying to sell that stuff. So you want to see competition, not too much, but if, if you're the first 
hog to the trough, as they say, if you're the first one there, and and if first hog to the trough, if there's food there, is a good thing. But if there's no food, then you starve. Um, so one of my favorite sayings is pioneers get scalped and settlers prosper. So you want to settle into a market that's already mature, where people are already looking for your product or type of products, and then and then get your share. Um, 18 is interesting. If there's no video on the first page of Google for your keywords, then there, that is a strategy to very quickly get videos ranked on page one to do some SEO and to get some of your some of that traffic. You, 19 is actually what you see. Is there a savvy marketer in this market? Because there's, if there's not, again, you may be a pioneer and you may get scalped. So learn to embrace competition. Uh, the more competition I got in, in e-commerce, the better I got. And if it wasn't for competition, I would still be making a lot less than I was uh, to the tune of my sales year over year went up by a factor of five because of, of competition. So you want to be in a space where there's savvy marketers because they're going to make you get better. It, I'm a capitalist to the bone marrow. So, you know, capitalism and free market and competition is a good thing. Hey, look, that's hard to do, number 20, if you sell on Amazon. It's hard to get a lot of stuff made and made economically in the USA. So as a source, yes, I import some stuff from China. But to be able to deal with Randy right there in, in the in the just the heartland of the United States of America and have product uh, manufactured and shipped out of Hannibal, Missouri is refreshing, I, I, can, I can assure you. Um, again, you don't want to sell something that's brand driven. So, and of course, you can't hardly uh, sell and brand driven unless you have the licensing to do so like selling Dallas Cowboys or Harley Davidson stuff You'll you'll get in trouble real quick um, And so that's it you want to create a similar checklist for yourself to know that that you've got a rock-solid product And the bigger the number that the more successful you're likely to be hey there are no guarantees But you can do your homework and plan this stuff out. So uh, look I'm not going to make this a Facebook training, but as I said, we live in a special time. Back in the good old days when folks tried to make their money with Google AdWords, it was query or search based. And so Google didn't know anything about anybody other than what they were looking for in the moment. But now Facebook knows everything there is to know about everybody. So it's not just trying to get in front of somebody searching for something, but you know their interest. And so with this targeting, you can know where they live. You can target age groups, genders, languages, and then interest. And what's amazing about interest is people who connected to things, and then you can exclude people who are not connected to something, which the power of this. And so the neat thing about Facebook is you get to fake it until you make it. You get to start using Facebook's targeting to get your offers in front of people, and then then once you start to build these audiences, you can start to learn more about them. Where are they? So you can actually do uh, geographic targeting if you know. Um, it's very interesting to me. Just a side note, this screenshot said that 200% uh, more likely to have this audience in Compton. I don't know if this was an offer for a gangster rap album, but uh, I'll let you decide. I'm not real sure. So the neat thing about uh, Facebook, audience insights as again you can target some very specific age groups and interests and locations and their gender and their behaviors and who they associate with <clears throat> and and that's to get started before you sell anything who to put your audience in front of and then where and where is the highest revenue because you don't have to run your ads across the country you can put them in very specific areas very specific times and know whether you need to do it web desktop or, or what have you so here's a very interesting screenshot where you can look at an audience <clears throat> only in Florida because for some reason you're making an offer that's pertinent to that local community, whether it's going to the beaches of Florida or you just know that your market, uh, let's say you're selling grandma t-shirts and you know all of them retire in Florida. Um, but look at this interest targeting. If you've never thought about this before, look for people who like savings and coupons and deals. If you're offering a deal to get them in the door on one of these deal of the month, Look for people who are already looking for deals and run a deal of the month t-shirt and them just to them to get them in the door and then and then market to them over time. Again, the power of knowing your market and knowing how many people you reached and how well the ad is performing and to learn where your market is. 
And I mean, it's that simple. I know we, we overcomplicate Facebook ads, but really you just got uh, an image that is a rug pull. It pulls the rug out from underneath them. It gets their attention. It's a pattern interrupt and, and they got to click and see what, what else is about. <clears throat> Look, I, I don't know how to write code, but Facebook wants you to do business with them so bad. They write the code for you. So here is a conversion pixel, which again, uh, once you can get enough sales to have your pixel smart enough to know who's buying your stuff, then Facebook gets really, really good at serving those ads. But again, you got to fake it until you make it. You've got to start using that audience insight and tweaking that and learning where these people are and then get some sales. And then Facebook's going to find out where these buyers are because that pixel gets smart. And I've, I've, I go to a lot of digital marketing conferences and right now we're on the ground floor of, of getting pixels. Dropping pixels on people is, is dirt cheap right now compared to how it's going to get. Look, Google advertising was dirt cheap and then it went through the roof. And Facebook advertising was dirt cheap and started going through the roof. But now with like video ads where you can get video views for a penny or less, fractions of a penny, then that means you can build an audience of people who took an action. And it is predicted. I know I didn't, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just telling you what other smart people said. It is predicted that if you build audiences based on their interests and the cost of doing ads and, and creating these audiences with pixels goes up, that you will become a little Google. You and I have the opportunity to be able to rent or sell marketing intel to folks who get in later in the market. So to be able to build these type of audiences, not just to sell them products and build an, an asset like an email list of a group of people, but to be able to, to, to leverage your marketing skills and knowledge to, to help others who don't get on the ground floor. It, I, I just can't say enough about that. So <clears throat> talking about fake it till you make it, once you get sales, this, this might be one of the freakiest things about Facebook is once you get sales, you can drop a list of the emails, phone numbers, addresses, whatever you get out of your sales system into Facebook and say, look, here's a group of people I know that trusted me enough to give me their hard-earned money. In fact, you can look at duplicate buyers if you want this to be a really hot audience. And you can filter for people that bought from you more than once. Drop it in Facebook and say, now go find me people just like this it starts to get really exciting. And so again, you can start to layer in these interests, target particular areas, age groups, and, and based what they like based on hashtags, and you start to build it around these lookalike audiences. When you've already got a list of customers or people who have taken action, you can find more people like that. And that what that does is increase your click-through rates, decreases your ad costs, and oftentimes uh, increases your average order value, which is going to increase your profitability and return on investment. So again, think about your product and who you want it to go to. Affluent baby boomers, they got money and they're online buying stuff. And so you, if you've got designs that cater to grandmas with some money, then sell them some stuff. All right, so this uh, comes from Ezra Firestone, who I've given us a fair amount of money. He, he uh, He's a rock star when it comes to these commerce stuff. Right, right now, you're just trying to figure out Facebook ads and run them to an offer and sell them something. But what's cool is this is a funnel. It gives all those funnels funny names like the flim flam flummox. But if you look, there is Amazon in there as a play. But if you notice, there's ads, there's content, there's opt-ins, there's offer pages, there's follow-ups, there's abandoned cart series, there's upsells. You know where you get all this stuff now? If you had to go hire people to set all this up for you. I, I'm not sure what it would cost, but I can make a guess. Years ago when I met Ezra Firestone, when I started in e-commerce, I think he would charge somewhere from twenty-five to $30,000 to build you one funnel like this. Now, if you knew what you were doing and had done your market research, I think you'd get tremendous ROI and get that money back. That was years ago. He's so in demand now, I'm not sure he even would give you a price to do it, but if he did, I imagine it's gone up by a factor of 10. I bet you would have to pay him a quarter of a million dollars to get a funnel like this. I would argue to have access to a funnel like this right now, today, in T-Rex for a fraction of that cost. This is what you have access to right now. So this is a very mature 
money printing. This is this is the most legal way to print money, even more legal than the government doing it. This is a way to manufacture money. And in the good old days, or the bad old days, just a while back, you had to pay somebody a fortune to do this. And now you can leverage a partnership with celebrity lifestyle brands, T-Rex, and Printex to have this at your fingertips. You got to do a little work. You got to put all the pieces together. But uh, and again, this is exactly out of Ezra's playbook of how to build these uh, landing pages and these offer pages. You've got that right in your hands with T-Rex. And so the first step is again build an ad, figure out the targeting, and a URL builder. And that URL builder is just built in uh, Google Analytics, so you can track where uh, your market is coming from and what ads work. And then you go out and find your targeting like we already talked about. And then, then you send them to an offer. This happens to be a squeeze page where you ask for the opt-in before you show them the offer. And basically, if you see, you're just baiting them in for, for $19 off. You're going to throw a $20 product at them for a dollar. You're going to lose some money on this end. I'm not saying you have to do that. The big boys and girls do that have deep pockets and have capital. Uh, if you want to just run a, a, a smaller offer, you can run them straight to the offer like they've been teaching you. Uh, run them straight to uh, basically a break-even t-shirt design and then try to upsell them on the back-end uh, funnels. And again, you want to not have the the upsell funnels be before the purchase. They need to be post-purchase. If you make too many offers before you get the credit card, they'll bail. So once you've got the order, but wait, there's more. The reason we laugh about but wait, there's more on infomercials is because it works. Nobody spends that much money running a 30-minute commercial on TV as much as that costs and doesn't do the right thing. This stuff works when you say, but wait, there's more. You'll never see this offer ever again. There's scarcity. There's a time limit. You need to get in on this. Um, don't be too shady, but that's the reason they do that is, is just like the Ginsu knives. But wait, there's more. Order right now and get two sets for the price of one. We have the access to be able to do that. The, the, only the big boys and girls in, 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 in Hollywood and, and New York ad executives could do. Again, autoresponders. This stuff's built in. Um, you need to be able to follow up whether they abandoned the car, whether they came in and bounced. I mean, and you can drop a pixel on them every step of the funnel to know where they, who took action and where they stopped taking action. You continue to make them offers over time. And then the offer page. And you know how to make them an offer and you know how to make them upsell within uh, T-Rex. Now, I don't know if anybody on this call has a business degree, has ever been involved in writing business plans. I've written a few. I'm not that good at them. We live in a time where this could get you funding. Isn't that amazing? And a really smart guy, Ezra Firestone, smart marketer, had his wife, who's, who's, uh, who's an artist, put this together. I mean, this is what the business plan of the future looks like. It's because anybody can write out a fancy business plan. This is actually a roadmap to go through, and, and I'm not going to read this thing to you. It's busy, but whether you're going to drop ship wholesale, white label on Amazon, or all of the above, whether you're going to import, then doing your market research, figuring out your supply chain. By the way, you got that through T-Rex and PrintX. What platforms you're going to sell on? Um, how you're going to provide content and education to your market, and take you all the way through this business model. And you, you've got most of that at your fingertips right where you are. Now, there's a lot here. And so there's a lot to learn. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute and open it up to questions and answers. I have, look, the Lord has blessed me financially, and I have spent a small fortune figuring out e-commerce, and I paid the experts to tell me what to do. Now, you don't have to. I'm, I'm not trying to talk you into coming to Hannibal, but if you come to Hannibal, you're going to be in a room full of like-minded people and I'd love to, to meet you face to face and sit down and see where you are and help walk you and talk you through a process. And so you don't have to do this alone. You got in business so you, you could work for yourself, but you don't have to work by yourself. There's people that can help. Look, I throw this up to make you throw up in your mouth a little bit. Uh, here's just some of the things you can do and specialize in to be successful in e-commerce marketing. I mean, I'm not going to read that slide to you. You need to focus on something. I'm not trying to overwhelm you, but I am trying to impress upon you that figure out what you do best, which is figure out your market, get designs, drive traffic to relevant offers, and build an asset. And an asset is an email list. And an email list is not suspect. 
It's not prospects. It's people who hopefully actually gave you money. And as Perry Belcher, our brilliant marketer, said, we live in a time where it might be the hardest it's ever been to get the first dollar out of somebody. But once you get them, it's possibly the easiest time to get more dollars out of them in the future because they know you and love you and trust you. So figure out what you can do well and then partner with a team of like-minded folks like this team that put together this webinar. And again, I just appreciate the opportunity to partner with Celebrity Lifestyle Brands and T-Rex and PrintX to offer a soup to nuts uh, thing and then to do these webinars every week and to do these events. Look, I've gone to events that were a fraction of as good as the one in Hannibal and paid 10, 20, 100 times more. I cannot stress to you how economical to be in a room full of like-minded people and experts and what you can get access to at these uh, Hannibal events. And so if you're not familiar with the movie The Matrix, we're running, I ran a little long, so I'm not going to show you the video. But if you're not familiar with the movie The Matrix, uh, go to YouTube and search Red Pill versus Blue Pill. Basically, um, you take the blue pill and you just go back to sleep and pretend you didn't see this presentation. And red pill is uh, you go down the rabbit hole and see how far it goes like from Alice in Wonderland. So in, in the movie, he says, I can't really tell you what the matrix is. I have to show you. It's hard in 40 minutes of me hollering at you. Well, 30. We got started about 10 after. In about 30 minutes of just the growling and screaming at you, I can't really tell you about all this. We can only... See if you're interested in taking the red pill and going down this journey with us. Uh, try to get to Hannibal. If not, figure out when the next event is. Show up. We'd love to meet you, hang out with you, and help you out any way we can. And with that, anybody wants to take the red pill, it's free to ask questions. <laughs> awesome, man. Thanks, Stephen. Um, you know, I had a question for you. As you know, if you uh, you guys can take a minute, if you do have questions for me, you can stop uh, popping them in there now. But um, I know you talked about a lot that it, you like your history and when exactly did you decide? I don't know if you mentioned this in in, in the beginning, but when did when did you decide that you wanted to uh, like really kind of uh, look into Amazon and and, that, and and try to like know all about it? Like how many years have you been uh, in doing this now? That, thank you for that question. So I grew up on a farm. Uh, farmers are entrepreneurs, but but. They don't have a lot of leverage. They got to get out there and work every day. And, and I wanted to be an entrepreneur and work for myself, but I, Daddy could tell I didn't want to work that hard. So he encouraged me to go to college. I got an engineering degree. I seemed like the right thing at the time. You can probably tell by how fast and how much I like to talk. I'm not a really good engineer. They tend to be pretty introverted. So I knew that the best I could do in engineering was was maybe start an engineering firm. I work for other people. I tried entrepreneurial stuff, and it's a lot of uh, you know, professional services is still trading time for dollars. Look, doctors make a lot of money. Lawyers make a lot of money. The problem is they trade time for dollars, and they don't have a lot of leverage. So I knew early on that the Internet and Internet marketing and e-commerce in the digital space was where to go. But i got to be honest, the engineer in me would, would, would suffer from paralysis of analysis. So when I was going to do any kind of, if I was going to do uh, books, take seminars, you, you know, the, 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 the uh, electronic space, it's kind of like why I never got a personalized license plate or a tattoo because I'm waiting for the perfect one. And my luck is before the tattoo healed or before I even got the plate, I'd see one that was cooler than mine. So I was always worried about launching a product that was me, you know, whether it was the coaching, the training, the whatever, I, you know, like I was going to be the next Tony Robbins, or maybe I will be. But when I saw e-commerce, when I saw Amazon, when I saw the opportunity, and they basically said, don't get emotionally attached to your product. Nobody care what you like. Find out the people that are money. They have their credit card in one hand and the other hand on a mouse or a keyboard. Find out what they want. That immediately got me over to paralysis analysis and said, hey, now I've got a system. I've got a track I can run on. I can do market research. I can find the suppliers, and I can learn how to market. Now, inevitably, I will figure out what my niche is, and I will get in, you know, coach. I'm already in that. But, but what's cool is instead of me trying to, to, to establish myself as an expert before I was, because something wasn't right about that. Now that I've had some success and I've applied myself, now, I mean, I, again, I appreciate the opportunity. I didn't beg for this, that, that I had the privilege of meeting Greg Ryder, and he invited me to come on and, and speak because of some of the success that I had. That's where the, the inevitability of getting into that digital space of, of being an expert and coaching and teaching and training um, so you don't, you, you know, you can speak from what you have done. So 
that was probably not as brief as you wanted it to be, but that that's a little bit of my journey and that what really got me over the of what to market was e commerce because of all the trends, because the engineer in me saw the trends and it just made sense. And there you just can't have too many products on the internet. Amazon can't have too many, Walmart can't have too many, there's there's there you can't have too many T shirts. You can't have too many mugs, you can't have too many designs. It just it can't be done. So there is no such thing as market saturation. Okay? So very cool. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Uh, um <clears throat> sorry about that. A couple of things. Um I want to know if, if you have a course from Jeff and Vicky, if you have a course or and they also asked or someone else asked if there was a way that we can get a copy of just uh, the, some of the slides that you showed during the presentation. Well, first of all, the copy of the slides, absolutely. It uh you can steal them because I stole them. A lot of them were from all the stuff that I've you know, bought over the years and I've, I've pulled together. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely share the slides. But as far as training, there's a lot of training out there. I can tell you uh, all the training that I did. The, the, the problem is it would be like telling you to, you know, go to a four-year school. But I'd rather just sit down with you and, and, and again, let you take the red pill and, and, and guide you and tell you where to go. So, no, I don't have a, di I don't have a digital right now but I am working with people who um you know one on one which again that's tough to have leverage and I can't take on with so many clients. But yeah, I can yeah. I can take on some clients and help them get started. Uh, awesome. So I know that you were kind of talking about this a little during the presentation, but another question came in is is there a way to use Amazon to promote I I'm, I'm it says promote tracks. I'm assuming like your tracks products or your campaigns. Yeah, you you obviously to the easiest way to get Prime eligible is is through fulfilled by Amazon because Amazon knows that they know how to meet customers' expectation to be eligible on Prime. However, there are a few FBM merchants. That means fulfilled by merchant, where you sell on Amazon as the platform, and then instead of fulfilling through Amazon, you fulfill it. There is a few that have gone through a tremendous vetting process to be eligible for that. Okay, so that's on the one hand. So could we get Printex there as your fulfillment house? Yes. Could you as an individual? Maybe one day, but that, that wouldn't be something I'd be too excited about. The flip side of that is, is you don't have to service Prime members. So you could not be Prime eligible and list your designs on Amazon and they get a cut because it was their platform and it is just backdoor fulfills into uh, Printex where you've already uploaded your design. So yeah, you could certainly, what Amazon don't want is links to somebody else's sales page. But again, um, what's interesting about Amazon is this is a great place to start uh, because there's so many eyes, there's so much traffic, but it's a great place to end up for free money. Like I mentioned Demi, who did very well off Amazon, did not do well on Amazon because she didn't have that strategy. Whereas if you go look at the headlines, just go Google Ivanka and Amazon. Ivanka didn't need Amazon, but it was free money. So there's people, you're looking for intersection. Somebody who has Amazon Prime would rather buy from Amazon than anybody but likes Ivanka's line. Now, obviously, Ivanka's line of clothing and perfume and whatever, her lifestyle brand, celebrity lifestyle brand, uh, went through the roof when her dad got into politics, which is great for her. But she also did well on Amazon because people knew her and were willing to go to Amazon. So it's a long-winded way of saying there's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. Like right now, there is a way, if you know anything about Shopify, there's a way to just click a button and say, yeah, I want to show, there's a button you can show your Amazon, uh, excuse me, your Shopify store on Facebook and Facebook Messenger and, and all these platforms. Now you can just mirror your Shopify stuff over on Amazon. And you can do vice versa. I have my Amazon stuff mirrored on my Shopify, and then the Shopify back ends the uh, fulfillment through Amazon. So there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. And what that starts to look like is crossfire, meaning, <laughs> to use a military analogy, if just me shooting at a bad guy, and we're shooting at each other and hoping one can outshoot the other. But if I got a couple buddies that can flank around the enemy and start shooting, uh, from the side, you've got a lot of stuff to worry about. So what you're looking for is overlapping cover fire and crossfire to be able to have all the platforms that are reasonable that you can afford and then have different fulfillment methodologies. Um, I, I am working with uh, this team. I've talked to Greg and Randy about 
you know, building this out so that you have that functionality to either mirror on Amazon or sell on Amazon and some sales from PrintX or, or, or vice versa. Look, if you had something take off, um, I'm sure Randy would love to print you 10,000 shirts and ship them to Amazon so that they're, they're prime eligible. So that was a, that was a convoluted answer, but, um, if you can't do it today, ties- you'll probably be induced. Yeah. Yeah. No, that kind of ties into some of the other questions that you were, what you were uh, just speaking on. Um, that's from Kevin. Does if you use any particular software, Amazon plugin, or do, or do you use your Shopify? Use a Shopify store. API, uh, whatever that means. You know, mm-hmm. Amazon's got API. So once you go in and get all the keys and the, you know, it's just like Facebook. If you want a developer to be able to come in and do stuff on your Facebook, you can just give them the secret decoder ring to be able to log into your stuff and do it for you. It's the same way with Amazon. They, they're, they're open source. They want you to be able to leverage their platform, whether it's, it's funny that, you know, the, probably the holy grail for them is to be a vendor and a vendor means you don't have much say over the, the sales platform. You just source stuff and get it to them and you build a brand. But if you're just a seller, then you can sell on Amazon, but fulfill through someone else. Or you can sell on Amazon and fulfill through Amazon, or you can sell on an, another channel and fulfill through Amazon. So it, just knowing what works for you. But, you, you, you know, when you don't know what you don't know, you don't know what your options are. Um, so hopefully that, that answered the question. But now, as far as having to add an app, Shopify already just recently added the show your stuff on, on Amazon, and they already had the Shopify link that just backdoor. So when I get an order in the middle of the night, I don't have to touch it. I get a uh, uh, order on my Shopify store; it just automatically fulfills through Amazon. I don't even touch it. Oh wow! Okay. Um, you know, I have a couple questions here, and, and I know people like wanted to see if, if there was a way to just con- contact you. Um, you know, outside of you know just the webinar and stuff. If you know, I have one from David who is uh, says he's a struggling Amazon FBA merchant with private label nutrition supplement. And he's just looking to get some help from someone like you or someone you recommend. And uh, we have another question about what's the best way to contact Stephen. And Stephen, if you want to share that anything with me, that's fine. Um, or you know, such as an email address or how you know, however you want to do that. But that's, that's, I, I'm okay that's with you sharing that email address I gave you earlier. And and obviously, I'm okay. real biased towards me. I could send you a lot of different directions. It's gonna cost you a whole lot of money. I'd rather sit down and talk to you, see what you want to do, and see if it's a good fit, and see if I can help you. And it's interesting that you just mentioned someone nutritional supplements. Um, I'm I'm all in on that. So I haven't started, but I have spent thousands of dollars getting getting that put together. So it's gonna be a good fit, I think, for whoever mentioned that. Okay, um, that was David. Yeah, and I'm already in the fitness niche, so supplements is a good fit. So, you know, anytime you can partner with somebody and build your own unique brand, but have the brands interpollinate and, and, and help promote one another, it, it's going to be a good fit. So, yeah, the key, you know, if you if you go by, I don't know if I'm still sharing my screen. There's a yeah. lot of stuff here. One of the things was joint ventures and strategic partnerships, right? And you can see what I highlighted. Where? A triple braided cord is not easily broken, and, and, and so there's strengths in folks, like-minded folks getting together and, and leveraging and still keeping their unique identities and building separate brands, but leveraging. I, I do, I'm, I'm no Demi Lovato, and I have 100 million followers, but I got close to 100,000, and, and that's over a couple years. So I've, I've worked hard to build, um, you know, a brand, and in the beginning, when you search for my brand, you didn't find me, and now I own page one for my brand on Google. Um, and I'm no SEO expert. It's just knocking along. So what is interesting, I'll say, is that Google loves Amazon because Amazon is so relevant. The name of the game for Google is relevance. They don't, you don't want to search for something and you click on something that's irrelevant or you'll stop using Google. So Amazon is extremely relevant. So instead of spending money on SEO, I'll say this. If you get good at SEO, it won't necessarily, meaning Google search engine optimization, won't necessarily get you ranked on Amazon. But the reverse is true. If you get ranked on Amazon, you will automatically get ranked on Google. And so if you search my number one money keyword in Google, that did not cost me a dime to be at the top of the page because it's my Amazon listing. 
So you see what I'm saying? And to get Google, ranked on Google yeah. don't mean you're going to rank on Amazon. But if you get ranked on Amazon, you're going to also, by default, get ranked on Google. Awesome. Um, a couple yeah. people asking what your main niche is. Um, uh, I just, yeah. yeah, I just told her fitness. I'm a, I, look, it's just where I started. I did have a passion for fitness earlier in my life. Um, I still love it, but it wasn't something I got in because it was something I loved. Because I, I told you I wanted an emotional detachment from it. Um, I, me and some other people got together and followed the formula and did our market research. And it seemed like the thing that checked all the boxes. You saw that checklist. We had one like that, but even more sophisticated. And our, our checklist has become more sophisticated. So look, we're getting more aggressive at, at testing and launching new products every day. And I'm going to build out this niche and I'm going to get into more niches. There's nothing that says I got to stay in fitness. I'm not going to stay in fitness. I'm going to get in apparel. I'm going to get in the kitchen. I'm going to get in electronics. I'm going to get into everything. Because once you know how to do something, it's lather, rinse, repeat. We've already tested this thing out in the fitness niche. Um, so, and the neat thing about people who work out, they also use blenders. I'm not saying I'm selling a blender, but you know what I'm saying? It's just funny that when we used to in the good old days when you went to go sign up for a checking account at a bank, they gave you a free toaster. Well, what's the bank account got to do with a toaster? I mean, it was a human being, and people who like bank accounts also like to toast their bread. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's exactly why you would start seeing all the, uh, you know, the healthy smoothie places open up right next to the gyms. So it's kind of like that same yeah. process, that, that mode of thinking there. Um, um, so, yeah, so, hey, guys, I just put uh, Stephen's email in the chat. Just want to make sure you do that uh, before uh, we end things here. Um, a couple other people, Patty, also uh, mentioned that she's also working on supplements. So that's cool. Um so yeah, guys, I think that's that's probably all the questions we have. Um, I just want to say thank you to Stephen, man. It was awesome information. Um, as far as the slides, I'll get with Stephen after, and he can send me maybe just a zip file of some of these slides, and then I'll put all that in the members area, guy, guys, for you, and then I'll post it on um, I'll post it on the all, in all the groups with uh, when I get it in the members area. So just stay tuned for that. I'll probably put it along right with this video, the recording. I'll just I'll drop I'll just put a Dropbox link into the slides. So when you go there, um, also um, be on the lookout. I will also post in Facebook. We're going to give away a Bible cover uh, design to all the members today uh, for you guys to run with that. I've just got to I just got to create the product and then and I'll export that out and get that ready for you guys. And so I'm looking forward to that too. So stay tuned for that. Again, thank you, Stephen. Uh, it was awesome, man. We really appreciate it. Again, he's going to be in Hannibal. So if you can make it, definitely visit that link I put in the chat here. Try to get there. It's um, it's going to be a great event, much smaller and a lot more atten personal attention, I think, than than normal. So uh, definitely check that out. And June, San Diego. Yes, and we will be there too. Yeah, yeah, we will be promoting that too as soon as we got that uh, link in that page. I don't know if the, I think we created one, but I'm not sure. I don't have it off of hand, but yeah, we'll okay. definitely be promoting that for sure. Um, but all right, guys, we'll take care. We will talk to you next Tuesday. And again, we'll have another guest speaker next week. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll keep rocking this, these, these webinars out. But I know they're helping. And I know uh, just getting some new blood in here has been awesome for you guys, too. So I just want to say thank you. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, everybody. All right. Take care.